Hi, 30th of March, 2023, MAO with Cal once again. All right, Mark Morbius sees more rate hikes. Wow, but yet, yet Yadini sees S&P at 4,600. Okay, guys, seriously, you know, people have been commenting and said, Cal, you are bearish because of the market condition and I've been explaining myself long enough, so I'm going to move myself away from the attention and bring the two senior folks in because they are the people who are either writing uh, research papers for people or the guy, Mark Mobius, who is like, holding $50 billion of assets. They will be the best people to tell you whether what we're going to see next, all right? So rather than I say, why don't let's listen to them? Wouldn't that be a better idea? Let's go. All right, so first of all, guys, we had a wonderful lunch yesterday. All right, the good food was excellent. This place is a must-go. If you can take some chili, this is a good place to go. All right, it's a Paragon basement level. All right, thank you guys for uh, coming for the lunch. We really appreciate it. And also, thank you, guys. Continue comments from now until next Friday. Leave a comment of the videos, and you will be standing a chance to have lunch with me again two weeks from now. Okay, thank you once again. All right, disclaimer apply as usual, and thank you, Ames, for the kind sponsorship. Now, first of all, guys, once again, my 20th intake is coming this coming weekend. So if you are available, you're free, and you learn more things from me, you just contact Susan at 868-5030 for more details. All right? Thank you. All right, let's recap what happened last night. Wow, the Dow Jones shot up 323 points, Nasdaq up by 235 points, S&P up by 56 points. Wow, what's happening? Well, apparently, the market now feels that the worst is over and everything is good. Let's buy some shares. So Microsoft, Apple, um, Amazon all went up. The video also, right? The thing is this, okay? The thing is this, all right? Are we really out of woods yet? Well, apparently from the chart, looks like it is because we have breakout in the technical. We have pretty clear that things seem to be better, but I got my reservation. But nonetheless, let me explain to you what happened. It's a turnaround. And of course, we all saw that it's Meta, Netflix that basically push up Apple, Amazon, all, all right? All the technology company all went up. So why? Because people are feeling that cost is clear, things is cheap, let's buy something. And of course, the KRE, which is the SPDR, S&P, Regional Banking ETF, is also up by 1%. But do note, once again, our general reminder, this index was down by 12% in a single week, and recently, it's just aging up by 1%, and everybody thinks it's safe. Well, I'll leave it there. But the two-year yield stay above 4% is something that is not there. Okay, but of course, yeah, from uh, at Yadini from Yadini research says that every day that something doesn't break is a good day. So he feel that now since the Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley Bank has already done deal, we should move on. Yeah, okay, no wrong. Look at the chart, beautiful. One, the moment the market start trading, every every moment is a dip to buy. But I really have my reservation. But I will let the um, spot of people tell you what to do. Okay, all right. Because now Credit Suisse violated deals on the rich clients' tax evasion. Now we all know that in the past we always hear this: they you keep your money in Credit Suisse or in this Switzerland bank because it's like avoid tax, right? So apparently now when things get into trouble, okay, everything's unearthed. Apparently now US saying that they violated. Okay, and the thing is this. There is a criminal conspiracy of up to $100 million in account belonging to one family of the American taxpayer. Wow, okay. And even they help a U.S. businessman to hide more than $220 million in the offshore accounts from the IRS. So again, all these are popping up. And in total itself, it's as much as $700 million. Wow, okay. So all this thing tells you that Credit Suisse, come on, if you get hit, it's a kind of like expected thingy, right? Then, of course, is the banking crisis over? Well, let's put it this way in retrospect, okay? First of all, we can see that, right, the um, uninsured deposit before exclusion has came down quite a fair bit. But you can see it's still at $45 trillion, okay? That's a lot of money. Now, let's take a look at here now. The total deposit, right, is here. And in case itself, you can see it's $17 trillion over here, which is like the total deposit, right? But if you look at it now, the total loan out is about 12 million. So which means that out of the $17 trillion that they have deposited in the banks, 12 trillion is given out. So that is basically 70%. So if there's going to be another bank run, what do you think will happen then? Again, you might say that, Cal, you're yeah, yeah, just fear-mongering. Now, the guys, think, is it possible there's no bank run? Why not? Because if the Federal Reserve is going to give me a 4% to 5% interest, why would I want to put in the bank that gives me less than 1%? So that is where I'm coming from. So that's the reason why now FDIC is going after the major banks. Yes, indeed. It's the latest in the market. They face about $23 billion in costs from the bank failures, and it wants the big lenders to pay, all right? 
Now, this industry spe faced special assessment after SVB and the signature bank failure. And now the thing is this. All the big banks like JP Morgan, Citigroup, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, all these banks will likely be in the watch list right now because this is something that the FDIC wanted them to do. So, of course, what do you think? No one is going to get it for free. Everybody must, uh, must pay for his due. So let's see what will happen from here. And that's why I have my concern in next week's movement. All right. So of course, again, other than I say, you say, let's look at the bull and the bear first. All right. Apparently a two person was invited in, on CNBC and they had their own views. I kind of like their views. That's why I, I decided to show you the video. It's about three minutes long. And the main thing is this. One of them is bullish. One of them is kind of like bearish. Let's watch the video, shall we? Let's go. Guest Ed Yardini of Yardini Research and CNBC contributor Greg Branch of Veritas Financial, both with me live. Welcome back. Let's let's do this again because we started this once and then we had a little banking crisis pop up, Ed. And it doesn't feel to me from looking at your projections like that swayed you at all. You still think we go 4,600 by the end of the year? Why? Yeah. Well, what has swayed me is that. Uh... The financial crisis that we've had here, this banking crisis, is uh, going to be uh, very well contained by both the Fed and the FDIC. And at the same time, I think it's going to keep the Fed from raising interest rates any further. I don't see the Fed lowering interest rates, but I think they are clearly now at a restrictive enough level where they don't have to keep raising interest rates. And meanwhile, the economy has been in a recession since the beginning of last year. It just happens to be a rolling recession hitting different sectors at different times without adding up to an economy-wide recession. So I think on balance, companies are going to continue to generate the, the profit gains. I think we are going to see a, a decline on a year-over-year -year basis in the first quarter, uh, maybe 5-7% for uh, earnings. But uh, from then on, I think we're going to see positive comparisons and probably something like up 10% on a year-over-year on a -year basis for the fourth quarter of this year. You know, Greg, as Ed was talking, I wrote down two words. Pause and put, both related to the Fed, because it sounds like Ed thinks both of those are back. They're going to pause, and the Fed put exists. If something happens, they're going to come right into the rescue, as they always seem to do. What's wrong with that view? Well, I agree with the pause part, obviously. Um, I'm not going to be a hypocrite about this, Scott. You know, last year, uh, one of my main complaints was that people wouldn't believe the Fed. When they said it's a 4% terminal rate, and we're talking about a pivot, why don't you believe the Fed? So let's believe the Fed. I'll continue to believe the Fed and, and think that they only have another 25 basis points. The thing that the market is not getting is that the financial conditions in the system itself is going to pick up the momentum. And so the Fed does not need to continue to raise rates because underwriting standards are going to increase. Credit is going to continue to tighten. And as my good friend Adam Parker said in the segment before, when credit conditions are tightening, you get slower growth. And so while my theme for 2022 was that I thought we were going to have a massive deceleration in earnings growth and top line growth that consensus was not taking into account. 2023 is the year of inversion, Scott. We're going to have a massive profit and earnings uh, and earnings uh, inversion. Uh, I think that you'll see company top lines come in rather significantly. And yes, consensus is now at negative six for the first quarter but it started the quarter at slightly positive and it's come down 6%. And we saw with the fourth quarter, that consensus just isn't good at getting this right. We went into the fourth quarter with consensus thinking that it would be negative 3% earnings and it turned out to be a negative five or 6% earnings. So I think that the market is still missing this. It's breathing a sigh of relief right now, but everything that the Fed did is going to start to impact. And we're going to see company profits and top line turn around and we're going to see a more discriminating consumer which is what Target and Walmart and others told us already. All right, guys. So that is my view right here. Same with him, Branch. All right. The thing is this, you have two views. One of them is saying that, okay, we have a very rolling recession thingy failing on, and now we should have a recovery. That's very bullish. And for Branch, it's very clear that he's saying that we do have a problem because of the earnings going to come down. And this is something that we all know that it's impossible not to have the earnings coming down when the numbers are showing that. Isn't it true? So definitely with the money, the bank's tightening now. Definitely they are going to tighten and plus FDIC going after them. I can tell you this, this will tighten up and that will affect earnings. That is for sure. But of course, it's going to be very difficult to explain this right now when the market is going up, right? So all I can say is this, things look at it for the factual way. 
Of course, when the price doesn't go up, we just stay in the, the flow. But let's take note of that, guys. Eventually, it will catch up. So that's the reason why you can see now the index, uh, the economic composite index is really coming down to the, to the below the 30 marker. And that is a very, very big, big problem here. And traders need to be very, very careful. And of course, now the S&P earnings, we can see pretty clear that numbers are showing that the downside is happening. It's coming down, as we can see here, while the Federal Reserve is increasing interest rate. And we've been seeing this before. Whenever the Fed increases interest rate, you do have the earnings coming down. This is something that is really very simple to understand. Isn't that true? All right. Nonetheless, it's all right. Let's bring in the guy who has $50 billion under asset, Mark Morbius, to tell us why he believes that there'll be more rate hikes. Let's take it away, Mark. Mark. Can you continue raising interest rates? Because the goal of 2% inflation is far away. Uh, we're now looking at, what, 5 6% inflation rate in the U.S., uh, and they want to get it down to 2%. So they want to continue raising interest rates without necessarily causing a problem with the economy. But if you look at the money supply in America, it's gone down, but not much. We're now at 21 trillion. And don't forget, you've got China with over 20 trillion, another uh, a big, big money supply in the global picture. So I think we're in a situation where the economies will do fairly well in spite of the rising interest rates in the US. So here's the thing, uh, you know, the flip side, of course, is uh, is recession risk if the Fed uh, keeps going or or uh, maybe overcooks it, uh, right? But I understand that you think by spend, uh, do you think that uh, spending on the part of the U.S. as well as China on uh, military, on technology, and sometimes it's often related, uh, is going to keep growth up there and uh, uh, keep us from falling into uh, into recession? That's kind of ironic. I mean, although admittedly, it's it, 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 good for business. Exactly. It's really a strange thing because on the one side, you have the Fed wanting to uh, lower inflation by raising interest rates. But on the other side, you have an incredible amount of money supply already in existence and more coming in as a result of government spending, the tremendous spending on semiconductors in the U.S. and in China, tremendous spending on defense in both countries, and uh, the, the combination of these two things, in addition to, of course, infrastructure spending, uh, will mean that the, the economies will continue to do fairly well. And a good indication of that is employment. You can see unemployment is not high. Uh, they, although there are some companies that are laying, laying off workers, in fact, uh, the uh, employment situation in the U.S. looks very, very good. Hi. So isn't that clear from the guy himself? The Fed Reserve is in the cash 22 position. They, they need to bring down inflation, but they also have a problem because they're going to flood the market for 400 billion again because of the bank crisis. So it's going to be draggy. And because once you drag your feet, you will have problem. And that's how I see it. Now, you can see some of this was reminded, all right? I'm going to say this once again. I'm going to write it down for everybody's sake just for today. All right, so take a look. Okay, my view is this. There should be some selling, okay, down to June, July period. Okay, that's how I see it. Then maybe we have a bit of a sideway and then we will have the recession coming in. Okay, recession coming in in August. Okay, I'm going to write it down here once again. So basically then after that, maybe the markets will go up again. Because why? You need to have a bit of selling, the capitulation coming in before... And people get freaked out and everybody say, okay, time to get out of the market. It's time for selling, blah, blah, blah. That is usually the bottom. And if you notice this, in any market sell-off, usually it will come at a time when everybody is pretty complacent. Everyone is clear that like nothing going to happen again. And that's where things really happen. So look at the chart right now. This S&P 500, I'm going to go live right now to show it to you better. Let's give me a moment. Let's go into the chart. Okay. Now let's take a look right here, guys. Okay. Now, first of all, we do have a breakout. You can see that, right? Let me show you the breakout, yeah? This is A, this is B, all right, and this is C. So it's a very beautiful trend line. And yesterday, we have a very nice breakout, okay? So that should call for a buy, okay? And the volume was slightly higher than the previous day. That's pretty good. So not too bad, okay? That's a buy reason. Now, the thing that I want you to take note on the technical side, on the other way of drawing, take a look here, okay? 
So what I did was I say the same thing. I basically have my own way of drawing technical. This is my, my number one. Then I cross everything because you notice that, right, this was where the market breaks and it shot up. When it pulled back, you notice that it basically take this level as a very interesting uh, trend, uh, trending uh, line here. And once the market goes below it, you can see very effectively, wow, the market came down, right? Okay, so that's why I tried to cut it across. And when I cut it across, you can see that you can see a very clear uh, technical resistance over here. So on my, the other side of it, right, I feel that using my own way of drawing trend line, I feel that, right, we are actually at the push-up for another wave of selling again. That means that in my opinion, we're going to see another wave of selling very soon, okay? And I still believe that we're going to see 38, 20 by maybe May period, okay? Maybe by then itself. Then of course, when we see the low in October, like I say again, if things really go mad, it is possible to see the S&P 500 trading 3200. But I'll leave it for another session. But the guys, this is my personal view. And of course, everybody is entitled to their own view, all right? So I'm going to leave it there and hope you see where I'm coming from. All right, guys, I'll see you on the technical side. This is Cal signing off. Bye-bye.